What's happening, everybody? What's going on, everybody? Let me see. I just got to get a couple more colors out. I never, I don't know why I don't start the show ready. I don't know. I, I look around, I go, okay, I'm ready. And then I hit the button and I go, oh, I need this or I need that or I need this. So, give me two seconds. You guys tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? We're going to have a good time. Let's see. What else do we need over there? What else do we need over there? Our blue. That's the wrong blue. <laughs> oh, what a shoot show already. That's what this is. Let's see. Where's all my color that I need? I need a little bit of sandy brown. We're going to make a cool little sea, uh, little sunset seascape. Just very small little crashy waves off in the distance. And some little cattails or corn dog plants, as I like to call them. Look like little corn dogs out there on the end of the reeds, right? So, it's going to be a cool little soft little easy little beginner seascape for everybody. And all I got to do is get two more colors out of the box. So give me two seconds. Tell me where you're watching from. I love figuring out where everyone's watching from across the world. It's really awesome to see the reach and where everybody is. So, just like that. I'm wondering, should we do a sunset sky or should we do a blue sky? You guys got to tell me. You got to tell me what you want to see, and then I'll decide what I'm going to do. I'll probably, oh, it's, it's, uh, it's up in the air. What are we going to do? So let me know, guys. What do you want to see? You want to see a sunset? You want to see a blue sky? I love doing a sunset for this scene, just in my own opinion. Watching from Alberta, Canada, Oregon, Florida, we want to see a sunset. Sunset, sunset, it says. My goodness. An Arizona sky. That'd be cool. Send me a, uh, anytime you guys have reference photos. You go outside and you see a really wicked sunset, send it to me on Facebook or Instagram. Send it over. I love reference photos. They end up eventually making it into the painting somehow, right? So if we're going to do a sunset and we didn't get out any sunset colors. So hang on one more second while Josh farts around and tries to uh, pretend like I know what I'm doing, right? <laughs> Let's pretend like we know what we're doing, Josh. If we're going to make a sunset. We're going to have the right colors out. Okay. Let's see. Uh, two more colors, guys. Hang on. Two more colors. I try to get away with doing a little thing, and then you guys caught me. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. One more color. Got the red. Got to have the red. Got to have the red. So tell me where you're watching from, guys. Is this your first time watching a Paint With Josh show? If it is, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry that you had to deal with my gigantic head for so long. So, oh, now I got to stand back up straight. I'm getting too old for this. I'm getting too old for this. Okay, we've got our cadmium yellow, our bright red, yellow ochre, dark sienna, van dyke brown, uh, sap green, thalo green, prussian blue, thalo blue, uh, alizarin crimson, midnight black, and titanium white. Probably not going to use all of them on this little canvas right here. But just in case, I'd like to tell you that they're out there. So, you guys want to see a sunset? Let's go into a sunset. A little of our cad yellow and our yellow ochre make these gorgeous little golden little sunsetty colors. Let me pop that little sucker right over there. Just like that. A little bit. A little bit more of our yellow ochre on the brush as we come out away from it. It'll go a little darker. Then we're going to add our red. All right, get the red onto the brush in there. Be kind of cool. Go up for some crimson action. A little bit of our crimsony bit as we come over there. All depends on what you want to see with yours, right? Maybe we take a little bit more of that yellow ochre color, that darker yellow bit. Ooh, mixed with those other crimsony parts. Just makes like a dusky little bit of our sky. Very neat. I actually want that color back underneath here too. Ooh, guys, we can actually use that as part of the ocean color. Look, all right, now we're going to do that. Let's take a bit of our crimson and a bit of that yellow ochre mix with the red. Let's just start popping in our far off bit of ocean back there. All right, we don't need anything crazy. Let it get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter as it comes towards us. Bam, that's it. That's all we need. A little bit of water out there. And then once we go and soften everything down, it'll be fantastic. Now, we gonna take our last little bit up there. We don't even need to go into the blue, really. Let's get a bit of the black, a little bit of our dark sienna brown and we're going to come up into here Oof! look at that color that's a cool dusky little color right there now finish that sucker around the edge over here we're going to let them all blend together it's going to be really cool so i'm going to take a little of our crimson as well get that crimson out into there just give it a little pinky tone just like that perfect now we're going to put these colors down and take our brush we've got to wash all that nastiness out of it right just like that so why my phone's blowing up right now let's see don't they know i'm doing a live show you can't text me during a live show 
Okay, here we go. Got the brush all cleaned up, all ready to go. And then we're gonna save this bit down here for our like white sandy beach. It's gonna be gorgeous. Gonna be gorgeous, guys. So, dab your brush in there. <laughs> Spray it off into a trash can. Beat the devil out of it into a bucket. And then dab it off on a paper towel. Gotta dab it off on a paper towel, right? Make it nice and clean and dry. Not 100% dry. You can still see a couple streaks in there, right? A couple streaks. So not 100% dry. You don't need it to be that dry. do not have to be bone dry. Now we're going to go into our lightest area first. And we're going to start crisscrossing back and forth. Just like that. Oh, about dropped the brush. <laughs> Here we go. That's how I hold the brush anyway. I don't know how you guys hold it. But that's how I hold it when I'm crisscrossing. And that way it's not so much strain on like, the, you know what I mean? You could do it either which way, I guess. But I like to hold it down here by the bristles. And then we can put our pressure on it, right? And bend those bristles over if we really need to. So just like that, crisscrossing back and forth. Crisscross back again. No, that's the wrong song anyway, Josh. I don't even know the song. There we go. I'm going to bring it down. Let it get all pink and gorgeous, guys. Now that way it'll reflect onto our water down below. I'm gonna stay out of that dark zone for right now. Bring our sky, sort of that red, just by our pressure. Look how far you can drag that red color all the way across your sky. Whatever you wanna do. Finish our edges on this side. Then I'm gonna drag a little bit of that slight little red back in from that side. You guys might not even be able to tell. It might be so bright. But here in person, it looks gorgeous. And right about there, we can't even tell where our Water starts and our sky begins, right? Now up here into the darkness, right into that first little bit where the two colors meet. And we're gonna start to crisscrossy, crisscrossy. Now with our amount of pressure, we get to decide how far you want that darkness to go across your sky, right? And it starts to blend in, become very soft. That's really cool. Then we can throw a little cloud over that guy too. So now that our sky is all nice and blended, look at this, you can go right across your entire canvas and not mess anything up because we've already blended it. It's already beautiful out there, right? Just gorgeous. Gorgeous. <laughs> so tell me where you're watching from, guys. What's your favorite sandwich? Because we love to know over here at Paint With Josh. Kick my paint box over here. Now, you know what? I want it actually a little bit darker. I love having the corners just a touch darker than everything else. Let's go into our crimson and our black together, right? Not just black, crimson and black together. Drag it down from just the corners up here. A little bit on that corner, a little bit on that corner. Might as well drag it from the top too, a little bit down. That way we'll have this deep, dark like haze over our whole sunset. It's gonna be really cool. Now that we've added that extra color, we've gotta go blend it down, right? So we're gonna take it like that, we're gonna crisscross back and forth. You don't have to go this fast, you really don't. It's all about just me trying to keep your guys' attention and trying to make a painting that's worth, you know, $215. I think this one's $215 in the shop right now. It's 40% off. So if you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and search for number 874, that'd be this bad boy right here. And you can get it for 40% off. I think it drops it down to 213, something like that. Free worldwide shipping anywhere in the world. Look at that. Bang. Soften that bit of brightness down a little bit, right? Very cool. Very cool. Now we'll come back in with our bit of our clouds and everything will be rad. It's going to be rad-tastic. So wash this brush off again. This brush gets a lot of washing during a sunset. Bang. Nice and clean. Beat the devil out of that sucker, right? Okay, now let's go back in and we'll toss a little sun. I love throwing a little sun back in there just because it's one of the most easiest things to show you guys how to paint. Now I saw somebody over, they posted on Facebook, they posted a picture and their sun was kind of thick. You could see there was like ridges around the sun, which kind of looked cool, but you don't have to make it that thick, right? That's why we kind of leave a brighter area so we can have this white paint kind of interact right here into our brightest spot, maybe plop, plop our sun in. Now we're gonna push flat against the canvas. See the, how the bristles are bent like this and the brush is straight out. So we're gonna rotate the brush, spinning it around in a little circle. And the more you rotate, the more it's gonna soften down those little ridges of paint. All right, trying to stay in the middle. There we go. Just like that, like a gorgeous little sun way off in the distance, right? And the more you mess around with it, the more it's gonna blend. And I try to stay out of your guys' way enough, but I also have to make it to where it's a nice circle there we go. Gorgeous. Like that. Okay. Now wash that little brush off. 
And we're gonna throw some gorgeous bits of clouds in you guys, you guys, you guys. Let's see, does anybody know how long we've been streaming for? I forgot to hit my clock. Oh, uh, let's see. I'd imagine we've been going for, what, 10 minutes-ish? About 10 minutes? Ooh, twin suns, that'd be cool. Like, uh, like uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Star Wars. All right, let's do that. Let's set that, and we'll start it just like that. Okay, cool. Yeah, about 10 minutes, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. So, a little two suns Star Wars action would be kind of cool. It would be kind of cool. All right, now, we've got a got our sun out here we're gonna put that brush away and let's go and we'll add some bit of shadowing for these clouds so let's start with our like we did with our sunset right we started in our lightest spot we worked into our darker colors so let's start with our lighter colors as our shadows and then work into our darker colors right so we'll get some of the red some of the crimson and let's just say we put it right back in here just wow right back around the sun right remember our ocean water whoop, I dropped the brush it's just about right there. That's going to be where the ocean lives. Right? We're just going to slide it right across. So don't want, to have, don't want to be too close down on your ocean because we're going to have to blend it and it's going to want to grow and everything else. And we can drop the ocean if we really need to. Drop, drain it, and drain the ocean down, right? Look at the little bits, little pressure, right? Not too much. No, no, you don't need to mix it too much either because it's just a little shadow, right? That's all it is. Soft little shadow off in the distance. So we can then take our white and we can go across that bit of shadow and brighten it up, right? So we'll take our bit of white up in here, just dumping it off the brush, getting it to stick wherever it can. A little bit thick, right? You're like, holy cow, that's some thick textury clouds right there. Well, of course, but you gotta put it on a little extra thick on because it's gonna blend away with those colors, right? So we're taking the same brush, haven't washed it. All we're gonna do is dab it off, beat it off on a paper towel. It sounds bad, but that's what we call it. Beat it off on a paper towel over there, right? Just like that gonna start to come in very lightly. We get to decide what they start to look like, just so softly. You go in, you get that little bit of depth as their white starts to mix in with the darker reddish yellowy color that we put underneath for our shadows. And we take the white and we pull it this way and we pull it that way. And all of a sudden you got this depthy, just filled little bit of cloud back there. Looks awesome if you ask me. Now, we're gonna come in here, not touch our sun very lightly, the bottom to the top. Over to the side, bam, wicked, wicked. Right now, we're gonna work into a darker color without even washing the brush. We still have our red and yellow color on there. So now what's that next darkest color that we went into? We went into our red and then maybe some crimson-y bit, right? We'll drag some of that crimson, put it down over here, mix that up. Ooh, it caught some of that bit of brown too. That's gonna be nice. That's gonna be nice. Now, what if we had a bit kind of extended along the back there that was just like coming down all crazy? Bang, throw these little weird little things out. You know what I mean? Anywhere. Slide them in, throw them anywhere you want. They're just crazy little bits and we're gonna take them, we're gonna mess them up anyway. So don't worry about it, right? All you gotta do, get a little bit of paint onto the canvas, come up here and very lightly, we start to mix it down. We mix it down and all those little straight streaks just disappear, don't they? They're just all of a sudden gone and we get to mix it and mix it until we like the way that it looks. And all remember, all it has to be is a little shadow out there. Just a little bit of difference in color between this color and that color, right? Just to stand out a bit. All we're doing, now we'll come back in here with our white. And I do it on a fan brush because I find a lot of people have uh, an issue with the palette knife, right? I like to do, I initially did it with a palette knife, but a lot of people stay away from the palette knife. They're very scared. So we like to use a fan brush, show you how to do it easily. Right now, remember all of our light that was on the top of the clouds here is now going to be on the bottom of the clouds. So come down into here with our white, right? And throw a bit of it off towards the back and then we're gonna blend it away towards that shadow. All right, and I'll try to stay out of your guys' way. Sometimes I have to do it almost upside down where like, <laughs> just to give you guys a view versus having my hand right in the way, right? So we're gonna try to stay out of your way. And actually I've got to do it this way. So we're gonna make our, our circles going clockwise so it drags the paint up right versus counterclockwise which would pull the paint down so we're going to come over here very lightly so lightly and then we're going to step back and we're going to look at it right just based off of i can't even really see what it looks like just off of the glare off my canvas until we step back we go okay it could be a little bit less bright right here right so we'll mix that guy down a touch bring this guy over here just a bit Right, now we get that, oh yes, right? Always take a step back and look. Always step back. 
Maybe come back over here and just a little touch of bright over it because it's such a dark space right there. I want to add that little touch of bright. We're going to work it this way first and then back, right? So we're going to take it like that, pulling it out towards the front, which softened about 80% of it. Now we're going to take that last 20% with a couple swipes, and soften it back. So we didn't cover up the entire bit of cloud shadowing back there, right? All that deeper, darker color is gorgeous. Don't cover it. Don't cover it. And look how it came out here and it got so light that maybe, just maybe we could get away by having just a little touch of just pure white. And if we can just connect them, oh, just bright enough, it'll be like an eyeball in the, in the sky, guys. So, so light, right? Because there's no shadowing underneath. We don't want it to blend completely away. And they have to be bright because they're getting hit by the sun in every direction. That's very cool. Very cool little painting. Remember, if you want to buy this painting, go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. And you can get this one. I think it's 213. I'm just adding a little bit of our darker sky color, right? Without even mixing it up onto the brush. Just grabbing it from the canvas. Hopping over here in front of you guys just to make it a bit darker. Dang, just like that. Wicked, just wicked guys. Okay, now again, bottom to the top. Try to go easy over your sun. There we go. All the way to the side to get these soft, little flat little things. And there's not so much paint on the canvas that we're dragging all the paint back and forwards, right? It's not so thick that when we come across it and do that, that it smushes and goes too far. This guy might even be a little too bright. Watch this. Just like that, soft little things. So look, we can even take a bit of that darker color, get it down underneath there too. Just a touch, just a different little touch, guys. Just one little thing can make or break your painting, right? Can definitely do it. Look at that little sky full of stuff. It's just fantastic. Actually, it might look a little cooler if there was a bit darker shadowing underneath the bottom of this guy. So what we're gonna do is just add a bit of dark, maybe add a bit more back here, right? Just more paint onto the canvas. Now we're going to come back in and just with our little mini circles and right, our counterclockwise circles without washing the brush still has the same paint on it because all we're doing is getting into that darkness. All right, we're going to take it along the edge of the horizon if we can. So a little bit extra pressure to drag that down here over three or four swipes. See what I mean? It's like one, two, three, four. We're off the canvas already. Just a couple little bits. Bang, bang, boom. Just like that, guys. Fantastic. You get that little soft little flat under bit to our cloud. And we can even go and pop in one more little bright section way out here that's kind of disconnected from that other cloud back there, right? So we're not gonna allow the two areas of brightness to touch. What the hell is that noise? There's some noise, it sounds like a busy signal. It's really throwing me off. Hang on. Of course, it doesn't happen when I'm listening for it. It's like, mur, mur, and then it stops for a while. Right? You guys hear that? What is that noise? What is that noise? Can anyone else hear that little beep? It's like a beep, beep, right? Anyone else? Or is it just me? Am I just going crazy? <laughs> uh, is there a freaking Amazon guy outside or something? There it is again. Two beeps, I swear I'm not going mental. Can anyone else hear those beeps or is it just me? You heard it too? Okay, cool. It's not just me then. I don't know what's going on. No idea, I don't think it's my doorbell. If it is, it's broken and it shouldn't sound like that. But either way, we're gonna try to focus over whatever the crap that noise is. Okay, ooh, that didn't come very clean at all. Let's go back for a second time. Get all that stuff off of there. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna come back in, we're gonna make our little ocean water just a little more noticeable. You know what I mean? It doesn't have goddamn noise. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. <laughs> I'm gonna be on a mission to find whatever this noise is now. If it happens five or six more times, I swear. <laughs> it's really starting to get annoying. Really. Like, I'm gonna rip these curtains up behind the easel and peek outside. All right, that's it. I'm going into the next room and I'm gonna see if there's something out front. It's really starting to irritate me. What is it? Sorry guys, there's something, 
It's in Bailey's room, though. Whatever it is, it's in Bailey's room, so it's fine. No worries. No worries. Now, let's come back in. We're going to take our thing right over here. Just going to soften it down, because again, these are so far, these waves and water that's so far away that you really can't tell any details on it, right? There's not going to be no big, giant, crashing wave, just a very soft little thing way out there in the distance, right? All we're going to do is just start to light it up in different areas with a bit of our white. As we go across it, right, we'll start to light up little things, but we don't want it to be all the same. So when we come in, we'll drop a little bit more, pushing a little harder on our white. So that's dropping more paint onto the canvas like that, get a little bit brighter. As long as we have some differences out there, it's just going to be this very, very far away little thing happening out there, right? A little bit of white, a little bit more white with a bit of darkness in between. Get you a little water as it comes in. Now, like I said, the beach is very far away. The tide is out. We're not going to see much from back there. Right now, we can always go back in, maybe with a bit of red on our brush, and add a little bit of darker bits. Just all depends what you want it to look like. You decide, right? A bit darker. Do you want it to be a bit brighter in certain places? Maybe we come in here, a bit more paint. You can even dab in a couple little splashy bits. Just like that, right? There we go. That's starting to look neat, guys. We're not trying to make it all the same color, right? Just dabbing it in, pulling it off to the side. These cool little things. Now what we're gonna do is start to kind of just mix it up a bit. Decide where we're gonna have our little dark spot as our lip, right? So when we come back with our red paint, just the same that we had back there, right underneath, wherever you want your little shadowing to be, you gotta drop a little thing of red. Just a little, little guy, right? And if it's not dark enough, go back. Maybe we need some crimson for this guy. He might not be dark enough. So we'll come back in. We're just going to go a little darker, a little darker and a little darker until we like how it looks, right? Doesn't have to be the most perfect thing, right? And that's almost really, really perfect because what we're going to do is take our lighter brush, sort of go over it until it kind of dissipates and we only have that little teeny tiny dark separator right beneath our wave. It creates that little bit down there. Perfect. Now. What I want to do is get a bit of my brown, brown sand on the brush. Come down here. I'm just going to start pulling it down, just sort of into that pinky area, right? Because again, very far away beach. Don't need a whole lot of details. And whatever's happening with Bailey's TV, I, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say, what's going on with it. There we go. Soft little bit of brown, way back there. Now, what we're going to do is come in, and as it gets closer to us, the sand's going to become brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Be very neat. Actually, gonna look somewhat like this with our. If we take our white, we start mixing that white into your sand. See what I mean? It's gonna get brighter and brighter. We're gonna be able to walk straight out onto the thing, and then we're gonna have this little hill coming down with some cattails, little different things sticking out. So stick around if you want to see a soft little seascape. And if you want to buy this soft little seascape, go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, and this one can be yours. It can be yours. I think it's like two thirteen, something like that. There we go. Yeah, that darker shadow underneath our little crashing waves way off in the distance. And then come in here. I'm not going to try to cover that whole thing, of course. We don't want to cover up the whole smash. Just add a few little bits, a couple little bits right underneath that guy, or right over him. That's right over him. And then so softly, I'm going to pull these guys to the side. Just the teeniest, tiniest little thing. Barely any action on that. Barely. Just no pressure at all. Little, 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 little bit. Way out there, right? Back underneath here. A little bit of brightness off in the distance. Very cool. A little bit of shadowing our light areas, our dark areas. Very neat. Okay, now we're going to need to clean off these brushes. So that means you guys are going to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And we'll get these brushes all cleaned off. And then... Start working on our little hill full of cattails and corn dog plants, is what I like to call them. Little corn dog plants. I don't know what you guys call them, but I call them little corn dogs. That's what we're going to do today. All right, get that brush all cleaned off. This guy over here. Fantastic. Okay. Always dab them off on a paper towel. This is a very red seascape. I love it. Oh, I just love it. 
Just love it. Look at those little waves off in the distance. Fantastic, you guys. The more you mix it in with that, that liquid white that's on the canvas, the lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. And like all that dark brown is instantly gone because we went down, we took some of the liquid white, we brought it back up. All depends what you want to get yours to look like, right? And look at that out here. Boom. We've already created our sand. It's already there. And our white sand right there barely have any paint on the canvas at all. Okay. Now let's come in and make up our little hill of shadows with a bit of our green, our blue, our crimson, and our black. Gonna mix them all up together. Gonna get that little bit of skin out of there. We don't need so much texture in that one. Whoop. There we go. Just like that. That buzzing noise is not gonna get to me. <laughs> I'm not gonna let it get to me. There we go. Whatever it is. All right, now let's take a bit and let's decide a little guy came out like that. He came down over here so we can still see some of the beach. And then it came up and then we'll have our little cattails reaching up into the sky. So let's put some bushes along that bit. Maybe we can have a little rocky action over here. Whatever. Whatever falls out of the brushes we'll deal with, right? So if we were going to do that, why don't we get our little brush, our little makeup brush, I like to call it, right? It's like a half round brush. Just like that. They call it the half round versus the large round, I guess, the full inch. This big sucker, I mean, you could use either which one, right? But you can see the difference between the full-size one and the half-size one. I like using the half-size when we're on a smaller canvas. We don't need such big bushes in this one, right? So we'll come into here, I'm gonna tap into that thing, getting all this textury action onto our brush. And then along the line that we had decided we were gonna go along, right? Pop it up into here, a couple little things. And we're working along, maybe we pop a few up there and we're starting to twist and then maybe it's just gonna start to fall out and we'll start to pull it out this way, right? And all of a sudden, just with that little directional line and covering up all of this stuff back here, right? We're gonna have all this depth in our painting. Little bits, little bushes, we cover it up, everything disappears back behind there. You don't have to see every single thing that you paint, right? You have to cover some things up, you got to, right? And maybe this guy, like I said, we'll slide him down, we'll put some sand over, it'd be really cool. So. Don't have to do really much of anything with those guys. And then what we'll do is take our liner brush, get into a lot of your odorless mineral spirits, okay? I'm talking like seven, eight, nine, ten drips into the cup because you don't pull a lot out on your little tiny liner brush. All right, and we're going to come into that darkness, a little bit of that mix, get it all nasty and wet, super sloppy and slick, right? And then we're going to grab up into here, just going to start going up. Oh yeah, you gotta climb up into your, into your horizon, over the edge of everything, right? Shooting some little guys up out of there. Climbing up pushes that water back. Helps you not focus on the water. Helps you focus more now on the little cattail bits and the little twisties and the action, right? All these little things that are popping up and trying to grow out into the scene. That's gonna make you not focus on that water back there and focus on things up here. Let's see if we can get this guy real big. Woo, that's a monster. He's an old flag up there, right? Very cool, but you gotta go up high. You got to. You gotta get up there to help your waves go back a bit further. Helps push everything away, helps make your reeds a little bit bigger, right? A little closer up. All depends. What do you want yours to look like? All these little different sizes and little different things happening back there. And then it all comes down to what your little corn dog shapes look like, right? Little corn doggies. Love the corn dogs. Maybe this guy's gonna have to have two. There we go. Being a pain in the butt, so we'll have to have two on the right, two right next to each other anyway. Bang. Okay. Very cool. I like that. I like that. So you know what? We can even do. We'll do some of that darkness down in there. Pop in a couple more little bits, just a little bit darker color, brings them forward a little bit more, right? And then what we're gonna do is have a lot of fun with pulling them out and get our white, just straight up white, like we're painting snow, I swear. Start pulling it out like that and then making a little smiley face when you come down here, right? So all we gotta do is literally, look at that. Look at that color right there, instant sand. <laughs> it might, I mean, you know, in a, in a snowy scene, that's snow right there, but in a beachy scene, that is some sick white sand. Take me to that beach, because that's where I want to go.
Now you need a lot of white paint when it comes down to doing sand like this and then having it kind of mesh and match up to whatever we want these guys to look like. And then we start to slide it back in, right? And then push these guys out again. We get our little smiley face, however you want yours to look, however it comes down, right? Changes a bit, a little bit of different light. Maybe back here's a little bit wetter, a little bit more watery sand. Out here's a bit more dry, right? All depends what you want yours to look like. Say it all the time. Don't I say it all the time, guys? I do, I say it all the time. So we're gonna pull our bits down like that. See how we came up, down, up, down, different ways, right? Doesn't all have to be the straightest thing or the most vertical thing. Look at that, we already have our sand just with the, with the little bits out there, guys. So perfect, so perfect. Just perfection. Sliding them up into the bushes, and then again, going back, working these little guys out. It'll be little shadows in the sand, just like that. Very cool. As long as we have our little differences in color, even though it's a very bright little, bright little, bright little color, just like that. Oh yeah. Oh, guys. Now, here comes a bit. Since we have all this excess paint, we can make a whole nother bushy little bit of action right up here. Crazy little guy sits right up here in the foreground. Boom, right? Just right out there, whatever he is. Whatever he is, it's right out there. Take him, slide him out, pull him in different directions. And then we got to go over and cover it, right? It's all green right here now. A little bit of that greenery. So we'll come back with our sand. Slide it out. Maybe we'll leave a little section of shadowing back there. Who knows? Much as it takes, right? Take that bit of white, slide it back up into there. Get this really cool, soft little beachy scene happening here, guys. So neat. We very lightly mix that up there, pull it out, slide it back, pull it out, slide it back. Each time, taking each bit of paint and moving it, right? Even add a bit of the darker color, our little, uh, our shadowy black color, right? Just back into there. A little bit of shadow back behind him. Really neat, really cool little technique. Now, let's go back to that any bit of wetness that we still had. We'll see if we can't pop on just a bit of little corn dogs in here. So I'm going to touch it. We're just gonna make it a little bit wider than everything else. All right, boom, a little corn dog out there, right on the edge of that reed, right? Now, maybe this little guy, he's a little bit further away, so his corn dog doesn't have to be as big. But just like that, we start to get him. Start to get him. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see, maybe this guy over here, just by going back and forth, wiggling around. Our little corn dogs out there. Little corn doggies, right? We're not even looking at those guys either because the more that we keep adding down here, the more you're going to forget about all the stuff that's happening back there. Little bits, grassy stuff that are coming up out of our thing, growing out of every which way, right? Some of these little corn dogs have already popped. It's always what happens. They always pop a little bit early. All I'm doing here is making this guy a bit bigger. Bit bigger, bit more close to us. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Perfection. Now, at the top of those guys is what we're going to have to focus on on a few where they've already opened up and you get these little bits that kind of fan off. So we're going to grab a little tiny fan brush. It's a little baby, a little baby fan brush. Go into that same little watery mix and maybe at the top of these guys, just a little touch, just like that. Little bit. A little fluff, right? You can make it as big as you want, small as you want, but just like a little, little bit of action, kind of flying in the wind. Maybe this guy over here popped open that way. Right? Just tossing it off, little bits at the top. That's all you're really worried about. It's all anyone is gonna look at is go, does it have the little things where it's popped at the top? Like really, that's all we're looking for. So this guy, little thing, a little bit of action. No one's really staring back there for too hard. Right, they're not looking back there for all those details. Come into this guy, make a few little sticks and twigs, and all of a sudden, he's got a lot of action down there on the bottom of him. Okay. Gorgeous, guys. I love this one. I really like it. I really do. I really do. Can get any more bit of our white little textury sand to come up into there like that? Oh, yeah. 
just those extra little bits, those little lit up areas, those little details back in there. Are what's going to make your painting sell? People are going to love those little things. Just like that. Not trying to make everything all the same. Just trying to dump in a little bit of extra color, very lightly brightening up our sand or darkening it to the smallest little bit. All up to you guys. Look at that though. Just fantastic. Just fantastic. We can even take a little bit of brown. Since we're down here in our corner, we're very lightly going to mix this brown in. Let it work its way up so it's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter. The more and more and more we do it, the brighter it's going to get. Right? And then we're going to let them blend together. So we've got both these colors that we're coming down on and going up on like that. Just like so. Mixing them and mixing them and mixing them. Every little swipe. There's one more little detail in the sand. Very cool. Very cool. There we go. I'll pick this guy, make that little bit of sandy mess over here. A little bit of white over the top of that. Now we've got a little wraparound scene right around our canvas, guys. Pretty cool to me. So remember, if you want to get this paint, go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. We add a little bit thicker paint, chunks. And you can grab this painting before anybody else. It's 40% off and it's free worldwide shipping. So head over there, get your painting while you can. A couple little extra bits. This guy's gonna be super thick. Look at that. Oh, a couple little things, little shiny areas, little dark areas, little light areas. Oh, nice. Man, those are wicked. Those are wicked, right? It's just like almost like painting a, a snowy winter scene except we're kind of just very lightly going back and forth with this tan color and our white. Just having them blend and mix and blend and mix. Very cool. All right, well guys, I'm gonna finish the show on that note, just like that. Start coming up with a name for this painting and we'll see if your name gets chosen. So uh, yeah, like I said, start coming up with a name and we'll see. I'll go through the names and we'll see what's going on with everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Very soft. I love these little scenes where you can literally take the paint and it's all mixing together. You can literally finish the edges just like that. Bang. Very cool. Okay. Let's set this big old palette down. You guys start coming up with a name. I'm going to wash these brushes off and then we're going to get picking a name. We'll name it. We'll number it. We'll sign the back. We'll get the certificate of authenticity. This one even comes with like four or five different frame options. I think though, this one might be the best. This little gorgeous little brown frame that might just go perfectly. Oh yeah, it's so much brighter. It looks so yellow on your guys' screen. I'm looking at it right now. It's actually a very dark brown, but you know, we'll see. We'll see what looks best. So you can get it with that frame. You can get it with, uh, which other frames do I have for that size painting? I can't even remember. We've got so many frames everywhere. Little things. We've got black. I've always got black, but I, I might've already sold the black one, but I get new black ones all the time. So, but you can get it with just the canvas as well. It's finished on the edge. You don't have to get a frame with it. The frames are always more expensive. So for 213, go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Grab this painting, hang it on your wall, and then send me a photo of it. Hang on. I'd love to post it. All right, two brushes left, guys, and I'll be right there. Just gonna get my two brushies cleaned, my two favorite brushies. That one, one left. All right, let's see what we've got going on over here, you guys. What do you guys got for names for this painting? If you've got the coolest one, I may just pick that name and rock and roll with it. All right, some of the times we let the buyers choose the name, unless the name is just so rocking and it doesn't get purchased during the live show, then Josh picks the name. So come up with the good names. You might get chosen. Might be one of the chosen few. 
be able to name a paint with Josh Painting. What an honor. What an honor, they say. Let's see. All this craziness. I have a really cool idea planned for the next painting when I come back later on tonight. So I was hoping we might get a sale or two in between that time, but no worries if not. A really cool idea for later on. So not sure if it's going to be exactly at eight o'clock. Might be a little bit earlier. But I plan on going live again tonight, guys. Gonna try to gotta try to make gotta try to make rent, right? Sell some paintings. So Head over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com to get this one. And uh, let me see what you guys got for names. And I know I gotta add the birds before I even see any comments. Let's see. Beautiful Earth as the sun sets, golden dreams, peach beach. I like that one too. Peach beach. All right, this is much more of a pinky thing. Again, it's like not, look at the, look at the TV. All right, it's much more pink than it is peach. I mean, but in the lights here, it looks very, very bright. So, little cattail seascape for us. Soft little white beach. And there's much more detail in here. It's so overexposed on you guys. It's like, it's impossible to even show you. I mean, there's so many little white details in the, uh, in the actual sand. So, in any case, I'm gonna set you guys down. Jeez Louise, Flamingo's Cove, Pina Colada Sunset. What time is it here right now? It's 7.05. 7.05 right here. Sailor's Delight. I like that. Something in orange. I dig that as well. Very cool. As the sun sets. Coral sunset. So on this one, uh, we probably won't do a varnish just because the, the varnishes are sketchy. They are really sketchy. Let's see. Finishes view. Uh, fishes view. I like that. Tropical shores. Pink Paradise, that is cute. I like Pink Paradise. Pink Paradise, Tequila Sunrise, that's cool. That's cool. Couple little things, cool breeze through the horizon. I like that one too. Through the, what the beep? That's funny. That's funny, but no one else will uh, will understand. California dreaming. All right, let's get the birds going up in the sky. And then we'll sign this old guy. Oh, a brand new guy. Here we go. Right underneath. Come pop him in. Bam. And we'll sign it right down here. So again, go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. And let's pick a name, guys. I really like Peach Beach. For whatever reason, I like that. Very cool. Very cool. Let's see, wash this little brush off, and then let's name this sucker. Okay, what we got? What do we got, guys? What do we got? Mellow Moods. What was that beep? I know, I like it. It's, I think the beeping's done now. It's gone now that the show's over. Simply Tranquil, I dig that. Coral Breeze, Warm Embrace. Name it 705, I could do that. I mean, it's already named number 874. Let's see, Orange Flamingo's Cove. I like that raw, I like that. All right, we're gonna pin that. That's the second or third time I've seen it. As the sun sets, go follow raw, raw. Go follow raw, everybody knows that anybody that gets pinned by Paint With Josh gets a follow, and that's right where we're gonna sign it, right in the darkest area. Don't let me forget that spot right there. Don't forget the spot, there we go. Right here. And number, what was it again? 874. Cool. This one's called As the Sun, As the Painting Falls Off My Easel. <laughs> That's what it's called. Let's see. As the Sun Sets. Perfect. Now it's painted on 722 of 2023. And we're all going to go to paintwithjosh.com to find my live schedule, to find my YouTube page or my Facebook or my Instagram, my TikTok, my Etsy store, uh, to find my Amazon affiliate store where you guys can get all your supplies and everything else. Go to paintwithjosh.com first. That way my manager will stop yelling at me to get people to go to paintwithjosh.com. 
All right, go to PamJosh.com first before anywhere else. And that place will take you everywhere you need to be. Dang, just like that, guys. Gorgeous. Beauty of a beauty. So I hope everybody goes and follows Raw. Awesome title for tonight. Fantastic little painting. Just a phantasmic little painting that I love. And we're going to come back later on and probably do a black and white scene on a black canvas. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully this one sells. I'm going to go take a quick break and then maybe we'll come back in a little bit and uh, see what's happening. Corn dogs on the beach. I love that. Oh, I love that. That's a cool one. That's a cool one. Eye of the sunrise. I dig that too. And it's neat, guys. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Now, we're going to flip this around and take you guys over here. Now, whoop, where'd you go? Over there. Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome. Welcome. See you guys later. Uh, let me know when I come back. All right. Come back right now. We're right here. No, uh, I don't made that an hour. I, I got to do, I have to, I want to go early enough that I can do another painting before I have to go pick up Bailey from the jumpy place. So, won't be too long. Should be too long. I, oh, you're totally kidding. You are joking me. It's like green. How did I get green on my face? I've been there the whole time. Okay, well, I love you guys. Uh, head over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Make sure you get this painting. It's number 874. Get it before someone else does because it will probably disappear uh, relatively quickly. We've got over 456,000 followers on Facebook, 297, 98,000 followers on Instagram. Going crazy. Do you love me or do I love you? Of course I love you. I love everybody. Everybody gets love. So uh, yeah, can't wait to come back. Uh, classic sign of an artist or sign of a classic artist. What? What's the sign? Did I miss it? How crazy I am? I don't know. Is that how hot it is in Las Vegas? Is that the sign? Ah, what's the sign? Mindset and biz coach. I want to know the sign. Oh, paint on the face. Yes. All, and all over. It's probably in my hair. <laughs> I, <laughs> I get paint everywhere. Everywhere, guys. So uh, I love yous. I can't wait to come back and um, I'll see you guys in a little bit. You're gonna come visit me at Meadows Mall? You gotta let me know because I gotta be down there. I'm not down there all the time. I'm in my house most of the time. This is where we do our creating at home. And then uh, I go down there. I've got a class on uh, August 12th down at the uh, gallery. We've already had a couple signups. So get over there, get your tickets while they're there. They're like 75 bucks and they're, I think they're 15% off or 10% off right now for the workshops and, um, and the one-on-one -on -one virtual classes. They're, I think they're a discount. So yes, definitely Taurus. That's me. <laughs> May 3rd, stubborn as they come. Um, but yeah, I love you guys. And I'm going to get out of here. Um, yeah. Until I see you guys again next time, which will be, I don't know, maybe an hour, uh, maybe less than that. So uh, I love you. Take care. Ha what is it? Oh, non May 19th. Excellent. Right on. Well, take care, guys. We'll see you on the next painting. And until then,